The owner of this McLaren 570 GT for some reason needs more power with larger turbos. So the girls are going to help get that power to the ground by installing a dual clutch upgrade. Then they turn their attention to an overheating issue on a Mercedes Benz. Welcome to All Girls Garage. We have a really fun project in the shop today that we're both exceptionally excited about. This and is nervous. And nervous. No, <laughs> don't be nervous. <laughs> this is a McLaren 570 GT. It's based upon the 570S. Uh, it has the same 3.8 liter V8 twin turbocharged engine puts out 562 horsepower 443 foot pounds of torque and like zero to 60 in a whopping 3.3 seconds it's um, kind of an incredible car yeah <laughs> that would be enough for most people no <laughs> not for our owners like why buy a supercar and like just leave it stock no we must modify so as you can see we've got several turbos on the table over there we're going to be upgrading the turbos we actually have a buddy that builds amazing turbo kits so got these out and we are getting ready to upgrade so we're going to be adding a ton of horsepower to this beast however we like to add horsepower responsibly here at all girls garage you've heard us talk about this before we're like a huge <laughs> proponent of supporting modifications yes. so his goal is to get like 900 some odd horsepower to the wheels, which is huge. And it's really going to push that transmission to the absolute limits of what it can handle, and probably a little bit beyond. This car comes with a seven speed dual clutch transmission. And we wanted to make sure that we could beef that up a little bit, make sure that that clutch could handle all of that additional power. So, yes, we've taken the turbos out already. And yes, we've already taken the clutch out already because we're going to show you everything going back together. You didn't need to see us taking it all apart and because this is kind of a super special dual clutch setup that requires some pretty intricate rebuilding we actually had to package this clutch up in this really fancy little box send it off to new zealand of all places to get completely rebuilt and sent back to us and amazingly it came back like in like a week it was not bad at all I'm excited to see what's going to come out of this box when totally. we check it all out. And I'm really excited to get it back in the car and get Absolutely. this thing running again. So, we got the box in. Shall we get started? Yeah, you want to see it, guys? I, yeah. I want to see it. I want to see it. All right, <laughs> let's go. All right, I am like every marketer's dream come true because I am a sucker for packaging. So, this is this has already won my heart. But Oh, I was impressed. Too. Wait, wait. And it's not for the weak muscles either. It is very heavy. <laughs> right, so before we go and install this, we just wanted to show y'all because, you know, this is something interesting. You think about rebuilding a clutch <laughs> and, you know, hey, I, I jumped to it. I'm like, hey, I'm going to buy a clutch kit. But this is kind of what you find more commonly in automatic transmission. These have all been upgraded. So we have our upgraded hardened steel plates as well as our friction material is going to handle a heck of a lot more horsepower. Yeah. And there's actually more inside of there. So... Yeah. More clipping force. And this is, to face point, like, this is a much more akin to, like, what you find in a motorcycle transmission or what you'd find in, like, the SMGs or depends on which manufacturer you're talking about. Um, McLaren likes to call it the SSG, which is seamless shifting gearbox. So you've got that automatic mode or the manual mode. And obviously, like, all of the guts and the glory is internal. You can't really see what's going on here, which is why we wanted to show you a little bit of this. Because um, it, it looks pretty similar to what we sent out to them, right? You, you've got your exterior buggy, you got your interior buggy, you got all the fun stuff inside. Right, but right. this is the magic. Absolutely. And you can't <laughs> see from the outside. I actually, do there can be, but um, the baskets are also upgraded to their billet. So this is absolutely going to be able to handle all the horsepower this guy wants to add to his car. Oh, and probably even more, which probably is more. hence the warning. <laughs> yeah, this like very well written, like, I mean, kind of cute warning, but so anyway, enough talk about this. We should probably get the car up in the air yes. and start the install for the It's installed. Yes, let's do it. Yeah. Carbon fiber. Tuck and roll. Tuck and roll. There we go. So since we already removed the nuts, <laughs> you probably thinking to yourself, we probably already removed the transmission. What are you guys doing back here? But you'll see, we're about to pull out the final piece of the suspension and we're going to remove all of this as one unit. Oh, there we oh go. it was a... <laughs> we're doing very 
take it over here. Just so you know, I'm like not nervous at all. So. I know. <laughs> I know you're not. Still good. Still good. Still good. We're totally clear over here. And I'm now fully clear over here. Okay. Nice. The girls have the seven-speed gearbox out of the McLaren again. And after the break, they'll make the clutch swap and show you some other performance upgrades to the motor. Welcome back to All Girls Garage. Now we're at the point where we're back at the beginning, or like, you know, kind of where we started from. <laughs> we have uh, we have our transmission out, we have our front cover out, and we are getting ready to put our brand new rebuilt clutch back. <laughs> you typically see it in like the regular passenger car world. So no. we've been a little ooh and on over here. And uh, right now we're just you know, trying to figure out, all right, well, what's the best way to install this? You know, there are no match marks. This is something that you're just gonna, we're just gonna sort of slide it on yep. and go. And we're lubricating each one of these little piston ring-like seals <laughs> uh, with its own fluid. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is gonna be making sure it engages with this gear, which we believe is the pump gear. Now, I don't know about you, Faye, but I would love to dig into all of the details of this transmission and how it works. I mean, we can make some certain assumptions, but we are no experts on the McLaren seven-speed gearbox. <laughs> so we're not gonna pretend to make that up. We would love to spend more time on it, but we just can't. So. We're just gonna set this into place and bolt it all back together and put it back in. Yeah. So, little bearings in there we wanna be careful of. Yeah, Make sure that nice. slides nicely. Yeah. Give it a little wiggle. On this side and just like make sure we got that. Yeah, I feel, feel up and down. Uh, and down. I am. Uh, up and down, around, around. Here we go. Larry, stop. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I think I just felt. Yep, I, I just felt little, it click in. You know what? And the, the gear turning. We turn that. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Okay. I, I want to double check, though, because we thought we were in before, and it wasn't quite. Yeah, okay. So, oh. you, um, yes, can I borrow that uh -huh. lovely thing? Totally. Uh, the trusty mirror. All right. Yep. I'm going to see if I can see. Just make sure. Get the right angle. Oh, yeah. That's fully engaged. Okay, I'm happy cool. with that. Cool. That <laughs> is. The very, age old question. Very so slowly. Okay. And cool. make sure it goes nice and smooth. Yeah. Boom. in we've got all of our nuts kind of tightened down and hold it in place except for this massive bolt now mm -hmm. this guy is actually going to go through the subframe and then through a tranny mount on the top of the transmission and then through to the other side of the subframe <laughs> so it's gonna be a little bit tricky this is kind of a two-person job i don't know how people would do this alone i Just... have no idea oh don't worry bogey got the wheel lucky does look like a wheel lucky doesn't yeah. it that. But it's actually zipped, so definitely gonna need your help navigating that into the motor mount, and then uh, may need your help also like get some. We're gonna, totally. gonna have some good communication. We're gonna have sure we to. Yeah, we'll get into place, and then we'll figure out a way to nut and bolt it. Okay. Well, slightly up a little more is easy. Slightly, slightly down, down is a less little so. bit is yeah. harder. So yes, you're. It looks like you're in from here. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Yes, queen. Nice. Nice. Okay. And are you through the other side as well? I don't know. Okay. We're trying to wiggle it a little. All right. Can well, we just go up a little bit more from here. Okay. I feel like I just caught a thread. No. Oh, nice. Did you? I felt. I thought right, I did. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see where we're at. It felt like it. All right. So we mentioned already that this car is going to get upgraded turbos and turbo kit, and that we're going to be doing the supporting mods. So. Ah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this well, is like stage we, two and three of our supporting mods. <laughs> totally. While we wait for the turbo upgrade kit, which is still in the process of being built, we know for sure that this massive turbo is going to produce a ton more power. So we need a different spark plug and we need a different fuel injector. So these are a colder spark plug, which is going to support what we're doing here. And these injectors are significantly different oh from the fact. Oh my God. Yeah, like over twice 
to size. Like factory, they're 500 cc, and these are 1050 cc. So Just a little bit of a difference. Doubling <laughs> beef. Um, the amount of fuel we're going to be pumping in. So yeah, and some of these we're going to be doing from above. But while we've got everything out, it's going to be well, the fuel injectors we'll be doing, you know, from from above. Yes. While we have the car up in the air and a lot of stuff out of our way, we're going to be replacing the spark plugs. We love to overlap labor and you know save on book time. Yeah, it's gonna be a whole lot easier. So I'll yeah. take one side, you take the other. Oh, you got it. All right, so then my, it's a good thing that I'm not on a injector clip popping competition with this one over here because I would be losing. The, While Bogey and Faye have some free time waiting for the turbo kit to be completed on the McLaren, they bring in the show producer's Mercedes-Benz to fix an overheating problem. Most of the tires that are worked on in the all-girls garage see some sort of spirited driving, and that's why we want to make sure that the sports cars and sedans are equipped with the right tires. This Raptus RT5 tire from Hercules Tires is ideal for all-season driving, and their low-profile design gives the wheel opening the right look. With the highest traction grade possible on a high-performance tire, you know this tire gets the rubber to the road round ride comfort of a high-end touring tire combined with the greater control of a high-performance tire. When matched up against other major tire brands, the Hercules Raptus RT5 exceeds expectations in noise control, ride comfort, and tread wear. Not only is the tire backed by the Hercules Performance Promise with 45,000 miles in tread wear coverage and a 45-day free test drive program, but it's also covered by their industry-leading road hazard protection. This tip is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Welcome back to All Girls Garage. <laughs> we pretty much buttoned up the McLaren in terms of what we can do at this very moment. We got a new injectors in, we got a new spark plugs in, and most importantly, we got our new rebuilt clutch installs. So we thought we had a little bit of downtime, and then <laughs> this happened. This is actually our producer's yeah. car. This is a 2015 Mercedes C300, and it started overheating on his drive to work this morning. So yeah, he was having a little bit of an overheating issue. It was like overheating as he was driving in the morning, once it kind of got up to operating temperature, and then it would come back down again. It was really super intermittent. Didn't seem really obvious what was going on. Had coolant, had all of the things seem to be needing to work we're working but check right, the fans were coming on fans were coming on all that good stuff check fault memory though and there was a thermostat malfunction code which these are electronically controlled thermostats on these things so you know they're part of a big housing they're part of this whole big matrix of hoses that it isn't really something you're going to take out and test it's not like old school where you can put <laughs> right. in some hot water and check its function so we got a new one coming we're just gonna get this old one out get it replaced and we're at like 99.8 percent sure that that's the Problem. <laughs> That's where we're diving right in. Is that coming on that side? Oh okay, yeah, there we go. We're good. Perfect. Right. Okay. Let you set out of the way. Yeah. Yay! All right. So, <laughs> if you think this is a little excessive for a thermostat replacement, um, well. Be wrong. Actually, we're going even deeper. We're about to pull out the intake manifold. That is where this thing lives. Yeah, we're normally used to seeing, especially if you work on domestic cars, used to seeing the thermostat housing like right at the front of the engine or right up on top of the yeah. engine. But here we've got it wedged down underneath the intake manifold. You can't go to it from underneath because you've got all of the rest of your stuff in the way AC compressor, alternator, all that other stuff. And subframes and yada 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 so it kind of has to come out this way and this is like also a good lesson to those of us who are just like you know diy hobbyists in our home garage it's like if you need to maybe home at the end of the day <laughs> you know look up the repair procedure and see what you need like who would have thought yeah. that we needed to order an intake man we're pretty close i think now we're getting stuck on that vacuum hose back there <laughs> Has arrived. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Sometimes you know, 
the service information, which we don't actually happen to have the service. I mean, I suppose we could pull it up if we wanted to, but sometimes it's actually helpful to like have the part in your hand and see where exactly we have to detach things because yeah. even just looking at this, we could detach it from multiple places. But in this case, we get the thermostat, the housing, and we can see that it's electronically controlled, and we get a couple of these pipes. And uh, you had a fancy name for this, a water distribution Thermostat and water distribution housing, or just water like, housing plan. So fancy, you know what I mean? It's like that. I kind of like, though, that they come with the additional plastic hoses. When I first looked at this, I was like, oh, we've got these plastic pipes coming to and from it. And, like, you know, if the thermostat is failing, the plastic around it's failing, which means the pipes are also, you know, normally when one thing's old, the rest of that system is the same age and totally. it's going to go soon, too. And cooling systems particularly, they're high pressure, right? So when you when you replace the weakest link, then you get the system back up to pressure, you get it operating properly, then the next weakest link goes. So while you're in here, oh, all the effort all to get the in there. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And as we were taking these apart too, like, you know, we, we had separated this pipe a little bit, you know, down a little bit further and we're just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, the, the rubber O-rings are like all dried up and oh, like yeah. they're just, you know, something we want to replace anyway. Yeah, well, the good thing is we get to replace it all in one fell suit. Ooh, yeah, that sounded promising. Yeah. Oh, look at that, and it was starting to leak. Okay. Cool. All right. And check this out. <laughs> you know, we can see the crusties from the coolant have actually like made it past this rubber O-ring, and this rubber O-ring is actually like pretty stiff. But yeah, look at all that. Yeah. What, what happened to our glove? Oh my goodness. <laughs> all it's like working in a tight space and all these funky little clips. But Just get rid of that. yeah, totally. We can see how that dry crusty coolant has made it past the seal yeah. and it was starting to collect sort of in this area. So all right, not only was this clearly malfunctioning, throwing a code, but also. Just starting to leak. Yeah, yeah, just barely starting to leak, but that was going to become more substantial in the near future. You know, anytime you see this kind of crusty, light colored buildup, it'll be a lighter version of whatever calling your coolant or antifreeze is. Anytime you see that on the engine, that's your telltale sign that you've got a little leak that's drying before it actually hits the ground. Right. And you want to inspect it and figure out where it's coming from. And this is a really good idea while we're in here, since we've got the intake manifold off. This is a, a gas direct injection, and they tend to be take ports. So um, we want to take a look at that and see if it's real bad um, and if there's anything else we want to do while we're in here. Where'd that flashlight go? Your purple one? Oh, I must have stolen it. Keep stealing it. Sorry, it. I did. I got from my own. Uh, that actually doesn't look bad, does it? Yeah, it's got a little bit of deposits right there. But not, got it. not horrible. How many miles are on this thing? 60,000. That's about right. I mean, I've seen way worse. That doesn't look horrible at all. The old thermostat is out and when all girls returns, they'll finish the overheating fix to the Mercedes-Benz, and we'll get to see how the McLaren looks with all new turbos. Since I don't have a press in my home garage, it can be difficult for me to replace wheel bearings when they're the press in style. Thankfully, that's not the case with Dorman Products' new preloaded knuckles. They come fully pre-assembled with all of the critical components like bearings, brake shoes, and even brake hardware to make install fast, easy, and safe. And let's face it, time money, especially in a shop. And if you're not fighting with rusted components and hardware, you could in essence make this wheel bearing job 75% faster with a complete preloaded knuckle swap, all while also providing more value to the customer with all new components. This knuckle fits Ford Explorers from 02 to 05, but since Dorman has the most products in the aftermarket for loaded knuckles, they probably have what you need. So go check out Dorman Products website for more details. Welcome back, guys. We are working on our C300 Mercedes thermostat housing spider, uh, whatever you want to uh, call this thing. This is ready to go back in. Mm -hmm. It should be relatively straightforward. Just uh, lube up the O-ring so it goes in a little bit smoother and easier. Right. And nice general slippery rule of cool thumb, you kind of want to like lube things with like what they're already going to be in. So in this case, it's already slippery. It's a great lube. I think we're good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So just let me know. Oh, you need and me, you know, but... since we didn't fill them in on this, uh, we should let them know that when we check those intake ports, they were okay. Oh, nothing we want to mess with. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's such low mileage. I mean, that's sort of a good yeah. sign. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. I think now you're there. Yeah, it's important that we're replacing these gaskets right now because we definitely do. 
want Airly to occur here. Not just because it's our producer, but you saw how much work it took for us to get this intake manifold off. And if we don't replace these now, we could have, you know, we could have a lean code, we could have a whole bunch of other problems that we'd find while we're trying to solve this problem, so. Definitely not worth taking the chance. Yeah, these aren't awful, but they have been used and we can sort of see some indentations where they've been squished before. Or are these are brand new, so. You got it? Nice. All right, so we got our thermostat installed. We got our coolant topped off. We took a couple spins around the block, pushed out all those air bubbles, and uh, we scored a, you know, some bonus points <laughs> for the boss. So yeah, all better hey. now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, that, it was kind of cool seeing a little bit of a, of a diagnosis in there. You know, we had a little bit of the practical family car and also a little bit of the supercar for y'all today. Terribly not practical <laughs> car, but we had a ton of fun working on it. It was really cool. Both of us first time working on a McLaren. I enjoyed it. I don't know about. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I'm anxious to see how this turns out. Our turbo kit is being built as we speak, and I'm really excited to see how it looks, but more importantly, what kind of numbers this puts down, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can find a way to show you a little bit of the end result after it's all said and done. Yeah, and I think this is what, like the second or third time that we've shared one of our collaborative efforts with our <laughs> amazing turbo building friend. So hopefully he's really continues to be happy with the work that we do and brings more of these cool projects to us so we can share more cards with y'all. Oh, definitely. But until then, we will see you guys next time.